Kelly Olin here, your Southwest Florida realtor, and I am passionate about educating my clients. Personally, I love to learn as well, so I am so excited to introduce you to one of my friends and colleagues, Jim Green from Union Home Mortgage. Um, you know, so many people have so many questions right now about mortgages, about interest rates, about the market. Is this a good time to buy? Is this a good time to sell? What are my options? And so I thought, what better than to bring an expert in to answer all of your questions and just to get a different perspective um, on what's happening in the marketplace right now. So Jim, thank you so much for being here and uh, answering our questions today. Well, thank you for the invite. And, and you are correct that it's like, there has been so many questions over the last six to nine months that it's uh, it's been a very uh, very interesting time for us in the in the real estate industry. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, every op every um, obstacle brings opportunity for us to learn more and to do better. Tell us about you and your experience in the mortgage industry. You know, it, it's funny because as we do talk about you know interest rates, and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, we're they're pushing six percent. I started in the business, and for whatever reason, I still remember this date, November 1st, 1984. And Jimmy Carter was in, was in office, he was a president, and that's when we had an 18% prime rate and mortgage rates at 21%. <laughs> and, you know, so when I look at six, six and a half percent today, I kind of always drift back to that thought. And I remember the days of, you know, seeing rates drop to 15%, and people were so excited to refinance to get down to 15%. So, you know, over my coming up on my finishing up my 38th year, um, I've seen I've seen a lot of roller coasters and I've seen a lot of ups and downs. And, you know, this is just another one that, that we'll get through and, and we're going to come through it OK. We've seen interest rates go up. We talked a little bit about people's uncertainty in the market. Uh, what indicates interest rates rising? Like, why are they rising? Why now? biggest thing right now, and the phrase that I've used is inflation is the enemy of interest rates. And we're seeing inflation at a rate of, you know, thankfully it came down to 8.5%, but, you know, we're really seeing inflation at the, at the higher rates in the last, you know, 40 to 50 years. So the way that they're going to offset the inflation is through increasing the short-term interest rates. Now we got to stop there a little bit because I think one of the biggest misunderstandings is that you know we're sitting at a just say for example a five and a half percent interest rates. The Fed's increased three quarters of a rate. And everybody's like, great. Tomorrow morning, rates are six and a quarter. Not the case at all. When the Fed's increase interest rates, that affects only the short-term rates. Long-term rates are really driven more by mortgage-backed securities and the coupons that they sell in those for long-term investments. When the Fed's increase in interest rate, it's going to affect our car loans, our credit cards, home equity line of credit, and any type of short-term loan that we do day to day. The reason they increase that is they want people to stop spending so much so that so retailers and businesses can bring prices down to kind of increase spending. And it's that fine balance of if people aren't spending money, then, then companies have to lower prices to get them to spend money. Mm -hmm. As they lower prices, that starts to bring the rate of inflation down. Mm -hmm. So when you see inflation that high, you know that, that rates are going to increase. It's going to slow spending down. It's I was going to say, so what would, what would need to happen for interest rates to come back down? Well, I think what's going to happen is, and I kind of think a little bit of it is by design that you know, I, I said the feds were about a year behind uh, the curve, and I really think they were. So now they're going to be very, very aggressive as they have been. And I think they're going to continue to be aggressive to bring interest rates down. And the two things that a lot of people have said, I think now I have gotten to the point where it's by design. One, they're increasing rates so much that they want to slow housing down and try to give inventory a chance to sneak up. Mm -hmm. But they're also at the rate when you, you know, have nine plus percent inflation, they're going to try to bury that as quick as possible. And I think the end result may be they'll take us from extremely high inflation into a recession. Now, the best thing is, how do you get out of a recession? You know, how do you offset inflation? Higher interest rates. How do you come out of a recession? 
lower interest rates. Mm -hmm. So I think I think this time next year we may start to see rates come back down. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's like. So, well, I was going to say that's why I tell everybody don't be so concerned right now because everything right now is short term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like in real estate and in finance, everything is cyclical. Everything's going to go up and it's going to come down. So as long cool. as you're there for the long term, you're going to ride that wave. Um, uh, and it's all going to kind of even out. It's just those short term, like if you're looking to move and then move again in, in, in 24 months or 12 months even, like that's where sometimes it might not be advantageous for you to make certain um, changes. But if you're playing the market that way, I should say, but if you are looking for something as a long-term investment for the long haul, then it's all going to play out. It will. It definitely will. So um, we talked a little bit about your perspective on interest rates rising. Do you think they're going to, or coming back down next year, do you think they're going to continue to rise um, over the next year? Or do you think we're kind of in a leveling off play, uh, period right now? I, I think the potential to, to see them go, it's going to be, like you said, it's going to be a little bit of a roller coaster ride. I think the potential is going to increase. Hopefully the numbers come down and, and the moves that the feds are making is starting to, to pull things back down. You know, we're seeing gas prices back down a little bit, but I think the potential that, you know, we have not seen peak inflation yet because we're starting, we're still replacing the lower end of inflation before gas prices really started going, you know, where they are today. So once we hit that, as an even level, and we start replacing kind of apples to apples, then we'll kind of start to see things uh, ease up. And, and a lot of people are talking that, you know, by the end of the year, we'll, we'll be in that and we'll, we'll see a little bit of a pullback. But until then, yeah, we may see some, you know, we, we may see some higher rates and then they'll pull back down. Okay. So <clears throat> I was wondering if you would do some math with me and you're more of a math guy. <laughs> I think that I am. <laughs> I got my calculator. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, so let's do some math for like a, a typical consumer, all right? Let's say they are um, looking to maybe purchase their first home or a move up home, and they're not sure if they should purchase now a home now at maybe potentially a higher interest rate or maybe wait for this to come, um, the interest rate to come down. So could we run a couple numbers? I think it was about a three or three hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage, and I kind of went to extremes of three and a half percent to six percent. So it's a okay. two and a half percent spread. Here's what people need to keep in mind: we're not seeing depreciation in the market. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, we're still seeing appreciation. It's just at a lower rate of appreciation, and we're starting to see prices stabilize. All of the overpricing is now coming out of the market, but, but values are still going up. And the couple of reports that are, are the main ones that people watch still calling for the next five years. This is not just the next five months, the next five years, five to 6%. Zillow just came out and it said they're expecting seven to 8% next year. Mm -hmm. So with that number in mind, you buy a $300,000 house. The difference in mortgage payment is about 500 bucks a month between three and a half and six. So you spend an extra $6,000 in interest, okay? But go on the low side, if you get 3% appreciation or 5% appreciation over that time frame, you're gonna gain 15,000 in appreciation. Mm -hmm. You're at a net gain of $9,000. Even if it costs you four grand to refinance, you still have a net gain of $5,000. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what interest rates are, in my opinion, waiting to buy at the expected rate of appreciation is a mistake. Yeah. The best time to buy is right now. And you're on the real estate side of it. You're seeing a lot of buyers pulling out of the market for that exact reason. I'm going to wait. Your buyers now do not have the competition that they had six months ago. Mm hmm Absolutely. You know, anytime there is a, a shift in the market, everyone gets spooked. Even if it like rationally doesn't make sense, everyone gets spooked. And it might just be kind of like a, a, a correction that's going to be happening right now. But um, I appreciate you kind of breaking that down for sure. There was actually three different studies that all saying that they predicted not only that the, the housing market was going to continue to grow 
in value, but that it, we are in a better position here in Florida because of um, the demand for this market, um, that, that there, there's such a high demand still to live in Florida. Um, yeah, the, the inventory shortage is, is nationwide. Um, you know, I'm licensed in Michigan and Kentucky as well, and I talk to, to agents there, and, and we're dealing, everybody's dealing with the same, the same issues. You know, our inventory might be a little bit tighter because so many people are, are coming to Florida, but that, that's going to be a nationwide situation. Um, you know, builders have started slowing down because of the cost of materials, buyers are slowing down. You know, there's just, I honestly don't know what the answer is of how we get back to normal inventory. It, it, it's got to be, it's got to come from the builders and they've got to, you know, they've got to ramp up their, their construction and their new construction starts to kind of help meet the demand. I was um, just over at Verdana Village yesterday. I was talking to my good friend Gita, who's the um, sales consultant there and just kind of asking her what's going on? How, how, how's the flow of traffic coming through your door? And she's like, it's, you know, it, it's slowed down, but, you know, prices are just stabilizing. It's just, it's just that there's not as many people bidding, overbidding basically right. for these homes, but they're still selling the same amount of homes because before they were having to hold back. Now they're still able to have that steady flow of selling homes. It's just, um, there's not as much competition in the market with the buyers. Right. And, you know, and the media does a good job of scaring people. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw an article not long ago that they talked about, you know, that there's a pullback in pricing, you know, are we starting to see the beginning of a a housing bubble and, you know, is that bubble going to burst? And it's like, it's, it's not anywhere close to that. The thing to keep in mind is our foreclosure rate right now is 90% less than it was when the market, when the housing market crashed 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, and from a delinquency standpoint in foreclosure, it's like 0.3% of all of the existing mortgages in there. It's minimal. It's very minimal. So we're not going to see a mass of foreclosures hit the market. You know, one, because if you get to that point, just sell your house because there's so much built, you know, built up equity, that's keeping it down. And the government put into place programs for people that that took advantage of the forbearance. So when they came out of it, it didn't throw them into foreclosure within six to eight months. Delinquency rates are extremely low. The foreclosure rate is near one of the lowest in history. The lowest in history was during COVID because you couldn't foreclose. We're only double what that rate was, you know, the houses that went in foreclosure prior to, prior to COVID. And then when we came out, we're only a little over double that. Mm-hmm. So we're at one of the lowest foreclosure rates that we've seen in the last 50 years. So talk to us about the opportunity to buy. Is this something that you recommend? Um, and maybe just explain to our viewers if they're not familiar, what is a point? Why, why would you buy a point in, in the mortgage world? Uh, you know, funny you should say that because I actually did a, a short little video on that this morning. What you're doing with buying points and points are also um, called origination or discount fees. Mm-hmm. So when you're buying points, you're essentially paying a fee, which is a percentage based on your loan amount to lower your interest rate. So what the buyer is saying, and you can do this on a refinance too, but mm-hmm. traditionally with buyers, what the buyer is saying is, is if I give you a certain percentage up front, how much can I drop my interest rate? So it's, it's the thing that I look at is, is a couple of different things. Okay. How much can you lower the rate? And, and not even so much important of how much you can lower the rate. How much are you lowering your payment? How much is that costing you? And where's your break even? You have to look at it from an investment standpoint. You may have to pay two and a half percent in origination or points to buy your rate down a half a percent, which doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So if you want to use an example to say, just say it takes 1% and we'll use your your example, the $500,000 purchase, 20% down, you have a $400,000 loan amount. If it takes 1% and you can lower your rate $100 a month. So you spend 4,000 to gain 100. Your break even is going to be 40 months. So that, that's the biggest thing you have to look at. What's your short-term uh, you know, objection? What's your long-term objection? Does this make sense? 
you know, if you could buy the rate down and say $400 to spend 4,000, absolutely makes sense. Yeah. Even if rates come down back into the threes next year, it still makes sense. That's, you know, that's part 1A. You kind of have to think if it's a longer term thought, what's going to happen next year? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and also how long do you plan to be in the home? Right. Uh, is this something that you plan to have for a year or two, maybe three, or is this a five-year, 10-year, 30-year plan? So, yeah, it, it, you know, if you were asking me today, I would probably not recommend it because I think we're looking 12 to 15 months down the road. You know, you want to be careful, even if you save $200 a month and you have a 20-month break even, you could get to this time next year, you're still $2,000 and 10 months away from breaking even rates come down to be really, really attractive, fingers crossed. And now you're at the point going, do I refinance or not? I'm still $2,000 negative from offsetting the point. Mm -hmm. So I, I personally, in this market, it's, you know, it's probably not something I would, I would recommend, but that's how, that's how the system works. Well, and if you, if you have that surplus of, of cash to pay down the, your a mortgage point, for example, if you have a credit card, you should absolutely pay down your credit card before you buy points down for your mortgage. Because six, I can guarantee you your credit card uh, in, uh, interest rates are way higher than 6% or whatever, whatever um, your mortgage rate would be. So, And the fact that, you know, you use that money to buy it down, you know, you're getting, you're getting a minimal gain on what you're doing, but you know, I always looked at interest rates as kind of like an investment. You know, you're paying five and a half, six percent on a four hundred thousand dollar investment. So, should I pay cash for the cash buyer? Should I pay cash or get a mortgage? Well, can you get more than six percent return on four hundred grand? You know, if you can find an investment that's going to pay eight, ten, twelve percent, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna double your your gain on that because your money costs are only six percent. Right. You know, when they're three, three and a half, yeah, no, put the money to work for you. And from a conservative standpoint, the money is always there if you ever want to pull it out and just pay the loan off or pay it down. Yeah. And you were at, uh, educating or um, counseling your son or daughter, and they were purchasing their first home or they were looking to sell. Would you recommend that they wait or would you recommend that they go ahead and um, take action for on the both either the buy or sell side? <laughs> I would definitely recommend moving forward. Buying today again, we use the example appreciation rates are going to outgain interest rates. Yep. Buy today. The best time to buy, there's no better time to buy than right now. Do not wait. You're going to cost yourself money. Mm -hmm selling and buying, we're going to continue to see a pullback in, in appreciation rates. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're just starting to see that come back down. We're still at near peak prices for selling, sell and buy because you're going to start seeing, you know, again, as those, those appreciation rates come down, that new purchase is going to be a more attractive, less competition to buy that home. So you kind of get peak value here. You're going to get a little bit of better value on the purchase. And if you're downsizing, absolutely. You know, for the family that had four kids and they've all moved out and they're downsizing, absolutely. A lot of, I work with a lot of um, clients that are looking for new home communities and many of the builders have their own mortgage companies. Can you kind of compare and contrast um, what the builders offer in their uh, mortgage um, programs and then what a part like yourself might offer? The, the biggest advantage that, that builders offer and by going with their lender is the incentives. And what a lot of builders have done because, you know, and, and you have to keep in mind too, a lot of builders have now invested and either own the mortgage company or they are a part owner of the mortgage company. Yep. So they offer some, some, some very attractive incentives to use their lender. Now, I don't think it's right, but they will pull those incentives away if they use a third-party lender, like myself. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest advantage of dealing with the builder's lender. Um, I've seen a lot of them. 
the, the thing you have to worry about and the, that my concern is and that I've seen over time is the quality of customer service. Mm -hmm. You know, when you deal, you know, the builder's lender knows that the customer has to come to them. Their level of concern and customer service for that customer's loan kind of takes a little bit of a downturn. Mm -hmm. They're not going to give that customer the attention that they need. Mm -hmm. Where if you go with a third party, we're all about customer service. You know, we're going to try to do and give that customer the best experience that they can get. You know, and the thing, it doesn't matter which lender they, they work with. It doesn't mean the builder is going to finish the house any quicker. It's just who the, who the money is with. And sometimes, you know, we can be a little bit more competitive in the interest rate than what the builder's um, lender is. But, but you know, let's, let's look at it this way from, from your perspective. You know, I look at it that as you get what you pay for. You know, there's a lot of lenders out there that have really cut their staff down to a bare minimum. They're giving interest rates away. But are you better off getting a loan where you don't know whether you're going to close or not? Because that lender and that company has such a limited staff, they can't. And then they put, and then on top of that, they just cut prices so much they can't handle the volume. Or are you better off going with a lender a little bit higher that's going to close the loan? Mm -hmm. So my, you know, my question to you or example to you, I, I have to say, it drives me crazy when I see people asking realtors to cut their fee. Well, are you going to do this? You know, this lender, this realtor down here will do it for 2%. Mm -hmm. Drives me crazy. One, no. you know, we don't walk into their, their business and say, hey, right off the top, cut one third of your um, profits off of, the, off of the sale of everything in here, and we'll, we'll talk about doing business. <laughs> they need a realtor that is going to work for them, that is going to go above and beyond for them, like yourself. Mm -hmm. You earn every dollar that you get. Mm -hmm. And that realtor that says, yeah, I'll do it for one and a half or 2% or I'll cut mine by 40, 50%. Mm -hmm. How much work are they going to do for it? Yep. And bottom line comes in, you get what you pay for. Yep. You want a quality realtor. You want professionalism. Mm -hmm. You want time and effort spent. Then Kelly, they're going to deal with you. Yep. If you want an advisor that's going to send you an email list to say 10 houses, go look at them. If you like any of them, tell me then go deal with the lender that, or the, uh, the realtor that is offering a reduced commission. Yep. Absolutely. As with most things in life, you get what you pay for because exactly. <laughs> you sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. And right. so it, it's really important to have a lender that will educate you and will be creative and will show you all of your options and educate you on what might be the best for your scenario versus just like, all right, here you go. 30 year fix, 20% down, let's go. So we look at different options for the buyers. We want to make sure even short-term, we want to make sure they're in the best position they can be in mm -hmm. and what makes sense for them, even in the short term. So, you know, we'll give the, we'll give our buyers different options if they're available to say we can, you know, here's two or three different options. Let's look and see which one is the best one for you. And ultimately, you know, they're making that decision, but they have enough information to make that decision. Mm -hmm. I've worked at, at uh, a couple of, of bank owned mortgage companies and compared to the situation now as a mortgage banker, we do one thing. We, we close loans. Mm -hmm. So if we don't do it right, we're not going to be in business. And it's, you know, and that's for all mortgage bankers and, and brokers too. But, you know, that's, that's the difference between past experience and now. We don't have any other income streams. So we better be good at what we do because this is our only source of income. And if we're not good at the business that we do, then we're not going to be in business long. Yeah. All right. Last question for you. Okay. If they wanted to reach out to you, had any questions about mortgages or maybe wanted you to pre-qualify them, how do they reach you? Uh, real easy. A couple of different ways. They can call me, text me. Um, my office number is 248-504-0131. Or they can shoot me an email. 
Uh, quick and easy email. It's jgreen at uhm.com. Awesome. And you mentioned you were licensed in Michigan, Kentucky, and Florida. So if you're if you are not currently in Florida um, or purchasing a home in Florida and you have friends in those states, make sure you refer them as well. Absolutely. Yep. I did 35 plus years on two different times in Michigan. I don't want to shovel snow anymore. So I'm I'm joyfully in living in the Florida life and <laughs> but still helping out my Michigan friends. Absolutely. We gotta we gotta support those Michiganders. That's what yes, we do. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Jim. I really appreciate it. And uh, we will talk soon. This was great. I enjoyed it.